how they're going to pay for this? They don't have any money. How, how are they paying for this, Nate? Are you talking about T-Mobile? Yeah. How how uh, how was it? How are they paying for this U.S. sale of trans? Is this all cash or is it stock? How, do you remember? You know, th this is something that we got to discuss. It's kind of part two to this. And uh, <laughs> I have your answer for you right here. T-Mobile's financial M&A war chest could reach $36 billion. <laughs> so, B, you walked right into it, sir. So what is, this, what, is this, what is this monopoly money? Deutsche Telekom, the majority shareholder, the parent company of T-Mobile U.S., could increase T-Mobile's overall financial M&A firepower to $36 billion. If they were to invest 36 billion into m and a b they're buying a lot of stuff remember 36 billion dollars is what it took to get sprint and mm -hmm. telecom is a profitable company they're not mm -hmm. as big as t-mobile us but they are a profitable wireline and wireless company that operates in about what half dozen countries or something mm -hmm. or more so they've got free cash flow they've got money and they've never put money back into T-Mobile. They've always taken money. This would be the first time Deutsche Telekom is putting money back into T-Mobile US. But $36 billion, B, that's a lot of dough, dude. Over how many years? I mean, it says M&A, so... Well, it's not, I'm, I'm sure they wouldn't give them $36 billion out of check all right there, so... No, over but... How, I, over how many years? I mean, how, how long do you think the M&A will be viable do you think it opens up things starting next year with the new administration or you know whatever uh do you think it's, it's going to take a couple of years maybe the end of the administration either way this this is probably something we're talking about 2025 and beyond well my question was about how that 36 billion if it gets granted would be would be levied out i mean are they going to give one check for 36 billion and just say here you go t-mobile or they're going to give thirty-six billion over X amount of time. Um, I, if I had to venture to guess, I'd say probably the second option, but I don't know for sure. So that's the reason why I asked. I think, I think the way it would go would be like they'd receive ten billion, for example, for a transaction, right? And if they needed to do a, a second transaction, another ten billion could be provided, right? That puts them at about twenty billion. Maybe there's another big one, right? And then maybe there's a smaller one. You know, I, I, that's what I'm thinking. And, and who's to say it could even be 36 billion. Maybe it ends up being 20. Maybe it ends up being 15. Maybe they end up getting regulated and they don't get the deal they want. Then they just bail. Right. And, and they don't do any, you know, that, that those types of things can happen. Yeah. It's all speculation. And we'll see what happens. Um, that is a lot of money. Um, we'll see how it gets allocated and all that kind of thing. But, um, yeah, I mean, We'll see what happens. More power to them. I, mean, I don't know. We'll see. What do you think is the most likely scenario? Um, um, we, we know about U.S. Cellular. We know about Metronet. We know about Lumos. Right? We're starting to see some of that fiber involvement. You know, the, I think the people out there are, are crazy, but there have been people talking about, you know, a, 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 a spectrum merger. I, I, I mean, to me, it's just insane. But I, I guess anything's possible in telco. Um, yeah, I mean, I've heard those rumors too. Um, I can't see it, but like you said, anything is possible, especially if, you know, we have another Republican administration that comes in. Um, and the green light to go. Yeah, exactly. I mean, anything's possible, so you, you really can't say. Um, but, you know, like I, like I said before, $36 billion is a lot of money. We'll see how that gets allocated and how it gets divvied up. If it's just one check or if it's given over a certain period of time or if they change that particular amount, I don't really know. But um, clearly, you know, there's some wind behind the sales of that company. And um, yeah, we'll see. Let me let me bring this up here. And, and Jay brings up a good point. Could this mean acquiring Spectrum? Jay, I want you to just look at what's happening right now. T-Mobile is getting rid of its DOD spectrum. Do you really think they want to buy more spectrum right now? I mean, I'm I'm being serious. I'm not even being facetious. I'm not trying to joke or kid. 
they're selling their DOD holdings. And there's no pipeline for 5G spectrum in the mid-band. We really don't know when 3.1 is going to be available. Like, we don't know any of these things. I, I don't, I got nothing. So if they, if they want to use money for spectrum, I, how about you use your money to build CRAN and millimeter wave? Oh, uh, <laughs> Josh follows up, says, no, I mean cable. Oh, spectrum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cable, the cable provider. Yes, yes. People are speculating. And I, I think that's basically all it is. I think it's just speculation. I mean, it's it's fun to pontificate and speculate, but you just got to think about the stuff that makes the most sense. I think they need to build their network. How about that? How about, like, embrace the grind and build a better network? Because, I mean, I hear tell they're getting killed in Florida. Yeah. Yeah, that's tough. Uh, they want to do T-Priority. They talk about network slicing. I'm still going to need backup power generators on every site. It's, it's the only way to do this, right? I think regulators got to force them to do that stuff too. But anyways, that's another topic for another video.